Well, for more insight on that story, we're now joined by Director of Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, Tim Anderson, who's joining us from Sydney. We also um, have um, another guest joining us from um, London as well. I believe that's Miss uh, Sakina Dautou, uh, if I'm correct uh, there. Uh, so welcome to the program, uh, to, the, uh, to the both of you. Let's start off with Mr. Uh, Anderson uh, in Sydney. Mr. Anderson, I want to get uh, your views on this recent uh, legislation, this vote by the uh, Israeli regime to ban um, the activities of uh, UNRWA. A number of countries have slammed that decision and uh, also a number of uh, UN bodies uh, have uh, weighed in. UNICEF says that this ban is a new way to kill children. Walk us through these uh, comments, please. Look, this is a tremendous test for the UN system, isn't it? Um, the, the Israelis have been defying, showing contempt for the UN in all its respects. They don't want to allow UN officials in. Now to pretend to make laws for the occupied territories is, of course, completely null and void in terms of international law. But what does international law mean here? Is the UN capable of following up on this? Is the UN capable, for example, of taking the matter to the General Assembly and expelling the Israeli regime from the General Assembly. Uh, it might be a step towards uh, instituting UN sanctions against the regime, that's, but that's really the test for the UN. Of course, we know that the action of the UN is blocked in the Security Council by the three NATO members, which are sponsors of the Israeli regime, but it's possible, I believe, that in the failure of action by the Security <laughs> Council, that with these representations from the Secretary General, from UNRWA, from UNICEF, and from uh, the Special Rapporteur on the humanitarian situation there, Francesca Albanese, I believe it's possible that the General Assembly could begin to take action. Let's cross over to author, journalist, and producer, uh, Ms. Sakina Dautu, joining us from the British capital, London. Ms. Dautu, it's great to have you with us. Uh, so uh, walk us through this recent uh, decision by Israel. We know that they've been after UNRWA since uh, this genocidal war started. And uh, looking at the impact and uh, the adverse effects that this could have on ordinary Palestinian civilians through UNRWA, this is just seen as another step in the extermination of an entire population, which uh, the uh, Israelis have been, uh, have been following with every means necessary ever since this genocide war on Gaza started? So UNRWA has actually been uh, the one that has been holding back uh, Israel from completing their ethnic cleansing. Now, we know that this has always been, uh, you know, their aim. This has always been the goal, uh, apart from killing people, you know, from the air bombardments, from uh, on the ground, as we have been seeing in Jabalia, and how they're killing the children and the women. Now, we know that UNRWA has always been that last point at which they would be able to uh, ensure that there is mass starvation, and by that, obviously, lead Leading to ethnic cleansing. Now, you know, today I just have been looking, Amnesty has called it the criminalization of human humanitarian aid. It is really, for me, uh, amazing that national countries strong, you know, nobody action we has continued any international Everybody condemns it, and the, this this is another level. Here we are talking of a man-made famine. We are talking about literally starving people to death. Um, different countries have been reacted here. Also in the UK, the prime minister has issued a statement uh, against this move. As you know, that you know the previous government in the UK had completely banned and stopped funding UNRWA. And then when we had this new government come in, they reinstated that. However, you know these are empty words, really. If the West really wants, we have seen in the past many, many times that uh, you know if if America wanted to stop Israel from all sorts of genocide and the Holocaust that they are committing, it just takes a one phone call to stop it. And other presidents, the previous president in the United States, have taken that action. So the fact that today, you know, we are waking up to the news that uh, they have uh, literally openly declared that they are going to uh, ethnically cleanse people by starving them. I mean, this, and, and nobody is able to do anything and then just take out statements. Th this is a very sad world we're living in. 
All right, and staying with you, um, Miss uh, Datu, uh, our guest, um, Tim Anderson in Sydney, just um, uh, pointed out uh, moments ago that uh, maybe the UN General Assembly could do something in, in this regard. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that issue about the lack of credibility that uh, the United Nations uh, has divulged ever since this genocidal massacre started? Uh, the Israelis target UN peacekeeping forces. They attack uh, UN-run shelters and schools and still uh, absolutely no accountability for these actions. I think they will go through the process as they have done so many times before. But as, as again, we are aware that, you know, any serious uh, action that uh, the UN would like to take will be vetoed by uh, America. And so, I mean, th these are just, you know, movements they're going through because the ordinary people in all the countries are appalled by watching what is going on and by their own government's responses. So it is al almost automatic that they feel like they are compelled to do something about it. And then they convene this, you, you know, UN Security General, um, you know, meetings. But in reality, we have seen in the past one year, nothing has been achieved from there. UN has really become defunct. Uh, this UN has only survived for the interest of the Western countries which set it up in the first place. So when it comes to any other nation, they really have no teeth at all. I think it's really high time now. And this, this probably is going to be the nail in the coffin if really they are not able to stop this uh, mass starvation by reinstating UNRWA, then this is uh, the last issue for us to, to be sure that the UN is really defunct. And I think now the world needs to look at alternative bodies. Uh, the BRICS summit has come up with a new you know, block. And I think it is up to them now to try and ensure that since they have the mandate from so many different countries uh, of the world that have joined BRICS, it is time to consider an alternative a body that will be able to take some kind of action because UN in reality really has no teeth. It is completely defunct. And I think we will go through the process once again without any uh, credible outcome, really. Tim Anderson, your thoughts on Ms. Datu's comments, one uh, being that honor was probably one of the last obstacles uh, um, preventing the Israelis from completing this campaign of ethnic cleansing and genocide, and this is just another way of getting rid of uh, honor and totally removing them from the picture. Also, Ms. Datu believes that uh, the UN has uh, proven to be defunct. Now, if that's the case, how can the status quo ever change? She's right that the uh, UNRWA is this last barrier, in a way, to uh, the onset of mass starvation, which the Israelis have talked about for some time. But I don't think we should accept that because the UN and France and Britain have, have this veto in the Security Council, that's the end of the matter. There are other forces at work here, and there could be a mandate from the General Assembly, there could be a mandate from other parts of the UN, from the International Court of Justice, for breaking this blockade. Basically, there are other big powers in the world, as our other guest says, uh, the BRICS, but really other, we're talking about other big powers, regional powers and international powers that could organise a humanitarian operation to break this blockade and to break the attempt to starve the population of Gaza. It it's really puts an onus back on some of these other uh, big powers who've said the right things but haven't really wanted to move against the US. But they could, if they had a mandate from the UN, from the ICJ, for example, because, of course, this is another uh, plank of evidence for the ICJ, for the South African case, to prosecute the, the argument of genocide. But so what, unless it arms some people to be able to Pick, pick up that mandate and, and go and run with it and not wait around for the... We know the U.S. is not going to do anything. We, we know the U.S. is actually behind and probably green-lighting this uh, this attack on UNRWA like it has every other um, genocidal operation against the people in Gaza and in Lebanon. It really does place an onus on other uh, big powers to do something and to uh, make use of a mandate from U.N. agencies to do something. All right, thanks a lot. We're going to leave it there. Uh, Director of Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, Tim Anderson, joining us from Sydney. And thanks to author, journalist, and producer Sakina Datu, speaking to us from the British capital, London.